Howdy, y'all. It's Ryan. And Adam. From, uh, well, he's from Warefoot. Mm -hmm. I am from RNA Music and also the Skate Nicks. Skate Nicks, right? Yes. So, uh, Adam came to town because we had some business to handle. We will not talk about details, mm -hmm. but there was business. And there's going to be some pizza. Yes. Some Jerry's Pizza handle. But, but while you're here, let's do a quick video. Why not? We're probably going to talk about updates, what's been going on musically, mm -hmm. maybe play some riffs, maybe talk about riding riffs or something. Maybe give maybe. some in-game spoilers. Maybe in-game spoilers. I love Batman. I felt like his his mm -hmm. role was I thought great. I, I, I thought they didn't have to kill Optimus Prime like that. Yeah. And it wasn't really. That was mm -hmm. bad. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So you've been really busy lately. Yeah, I've been super busy. We've been traveling around. Uh, Skating's traveled around for about two weeks. Did like you know, started in Oklahoma and then fought up. We made like a little kind of like star across America. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a, a, a deal where we had shows booked and then a few shows dropped out. So it was kind of, how can we fill those shows in? So it wasn't your traditional route, but it was, you know, we, we did 11 shows in 11 days. So Wow. Yeah, it was that's a, that's a, a lot fair of, a lot, lot of, lot of mileage. Yeah. Did Robert yeah. Baker come see you? Robert Baker did not come see me. Very disappointed. Slacker. Come on, Robert. We played right next door to his house. It was all He fun. literally could have walked to. He could have walked to the game. And Robert was probably about a, Robert was probably about an hour away from where we were. Uh, Ike came out. Ike and Dylan came out for Flipside Music. Of course they did. Shout out to uh, the free uh, plugin we just uh, plug we just gave them. Uh, <laughs> all the Flipside. Yeah, the Flipside Flipside crew came out uh, in Denver. It was it was cool hanging out with them. Uh, they thought it was a Warefoot show, oh. uh, so they were a little confused. Oh, it's, okay. It's different. Like Warefoot's very, very, very doomy and 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 sludgy and, and yeah. uh, more up Dylan's alley. Which is Dylan's thing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's what we were talking about. Everybody's rigs in town. Like we're, we're talking about, like skating is all trying to move down to smaller guitar rigs. Where it's like if we could just not have a guitar rig at all and mm -hmm. just do pedal wards. Yeah. Really, if I could just carry a Line Six Helix stomp and run straight yeah. to house, like I'll do that. That and a guitar, right? Um, but yeah, Dylan was telling me about everybody's everybody's uh, amps in town or whatever. But yeah, so we, they got there. It was like just retarded sixth grade humor over <laughs> <laughs> over like punk rock industrial riffs. Yeah, so it was a little that. different, a little different. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, so that was a pretty busy thing. And then yeah, when you came back, you came some... back right into Warefoot. You know, so it was like. We had uh, our last show at Curtain Club because that's kind of, that's uh, that unfortunately was South closing. By Southwest. Oh, before the skate mix, the tour. I had South by Southwest with both bands oh. um, before tour. Yes, and then um, man, I already forgot about that. Yeah, so that was cool. We met uh, we met a couple of people at South by uh, that seemed interested. So see what happens. Uh, yeah, um, when. It, they might want to give us free Q-tips. I mean, it's, it's yeah. not like we're about to get a record deal, right? right. Um, uh, but yeah, so some people like you meet any, anybody can be anybody there. Like you might right. meet somebody that looks it's like they're they're no one. But it's like that might they might be the head of A and R for some film department. Like they're trying to get music for a movie or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. There's a couple of, a couple of connections we made. Something may or may not come of it. Um, but then yeah. South by and then tour and then right into you know a double Dallas weekend with yeah. Warefoot and uh, we made a bunch of good connections at that finally got in front of some of the right people there because we've been when we went to Dallas originally it was just like hey can, can we play can we come play a show please yeah um, and it was just wherever we could get in and we met some cool people um, you know uh, who've been good to us up there and uh, but it's just like we haven't really found like our home or uh, like we've met some really good people like Josh Puerta um, was with Black Star Republic and now mm -hmm. he's with Project Rogue. Now he's got his own band, Santa Muerta. I hope I said that right, Josh. I'm sorry. Santa Muerta? I don't know. I'm sorry. Saint, <laughs> Saint of Death. Yes, the Saint of Death. Saint of Death. Uh, but it, it's, it, you know, it, it's his, his, his sludgier project. But, you know, the, you know Josh is just more family than, than a lot of... Uh, a lot of the bands up there just just because like Josh I mean Josh will drop down and watch us in Tyler but you know we, we finally got around some of the people who play similar music to us mm -hmm. and so it's and they're like oh you guys should you guys should talk to these people you guys should talk to these people y'all should play here exactly that. so we, we uh, Reno's has been very good to us Sarah uh, runs sound 
right there, and um, uh, she she put us on uh, Fuzz Fest in August. I think it's August. I saw a post about that. Might be in July. Probably August though. There's, we've got a, we've got four or five shows coming up in the summer, but um, but I think it's, it, it, it's we're gonna get to play with Greenbeard and um, four or five other bands we've been wanting to play with, but I can't yeah. remember names right now. But it'll be on the poster. It's on the poster. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So very busy. Super then. busy. Yeah. And then you had to drive to R&A Music today. I did have to drive to R&A Music today, and I'm moving house right now at the right. same time. So that. So. That, so. Uh, lots of lots of lots of stuff going on. And hashtag, how's your album coming? Album coming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just stopped working on it all together right before tour because we were trying to get ready for yeah. South by, and we all knew we weren't going to do much. So as soon as as soon as the house move gets settled, that's the first thing back up on the on the chopping block is to is to get that finished up because we we've got people that we need to get music to. If nothing else, um, we need to get. Um, we need to get one or two songs into a couple of people's hands, um, you know, if not the whole project. So yeah. we're going to try and get that finished up as soon as possible. So that continues to roll. It does continue to roll. We're, after you move here. We're house. always further along than we were last time I talked to you about it, but it's different, different amounts. Further, <laughs> further along than my album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty right on it. So <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, what what's, what's next, gigs, other than the stuff in the summer? Uh, yeah, uh, we've got, well, I mean, we've got stuff coming up, I guess. I'd have to look at, uh, I'll have to edit this, or you can just... I can edit. I can edit out, but... Okay, so we got one, two, three. So coming up, we've got a June 15th show at Acadia in Houston, Texas. Um, I don't know who we're playing with yet. Yeah. Uh, July 20th, we're playing at Reno's in Fort Worth, uh, right down the Deep Ellum. Uh, there's a dope pizza spot with the world's giantest slices of pizza in Dallas right really? there. Um, there's a super good easy slider uh, right there, just kind of back around the corner. And this is all like right around like three links and trees and yeah, yeah. curtain club. And uh, what was it, Pecan Lodge, Pecan Ridge? Pecan, yeah, yeah, yeah. hour long wait that Pecan Robert something. Baker and Greg wanted us to meet him at. And we right. said, no. But no, it's man. right there too. It smells delicious. I've never eaten there because there's a lot, but it smells delicious. There's a the Fuzzy's Tacos. There's a Fuzzy's Tacos. I don't go there though. Everything, if I, I'm not. Down in Fuzzy's, just everything to me, Fuzzy tastes the same. It takes a long time to make a couple of tacos. Yeah. I felt like it was, and it wasn't real busy. Mm -hmm. But they were good tacos. Now, the slider place will bring you a mason jar full of banana pudding. What? That's what I'm just saying. Oh, man. Yep. And then August 10th, we're playing in Lufkin, Texas. Um, there's a new venue there. It's kind of like a DIY mm -hmm. kind of thing. So we'll see how that goes. I think they've had one show so far. Um, and then August 31st is Fuzz Fest at Reno's. And that's going to be a two day. Tickets are on sale right now. You can look up Reno's uh, Chop Shop. Fuzz Fest. On, on uh, Facebook. Yeah. On the Facebook. Uh, look up Fuzz Fest on the Facebook. You'll find and it. And then uh, July 27th, we are also, we're also playing one show in June, two shows in July, two shows in August. We'll be in Nacogdoches on the 27th. And recording tracks in between. Days. In between recording tracks, trying to, get, <laughs> trying to get that done. People, people need some musics. They need it, yeah, because that, that'll probably open up even more gigs. Probably oh, for man. sure. Also, at this point with us, it's like we just it's it's a it's a hurdle to get over just so that like we we'd like to start writing because mm -hmm. we we've got we wrote all these songs and then wrote a, another set of songs. So as soon as as soon as this one's done, we're gonna start tracking drums for the second EP because it's already completely written. Right. And then, but we we'd also like to start writing on the third one, but it's like it's one, yeah. let's get one thing done before we jump. Way the first one out. out yeah. Of, yeah. For real. Awesome. Mm -hmm. well, I'm looking forward to it. That's a nice checker you have. Right it there. is. It's a very it's a vampire burst. Uh, very red. Solo two. Is this solo this two? This is a solo six. Solo six. Solo six, which are a little bit harder to find. Well, that specific one is actually very hard to find now. Yeah, I haven't ever seen the red like this. I, I like think it. because I've been collecting these, 
Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying it's because of me, but they used to be able to find a lot of used uh, Hellraiser Extremes, mm -hmm. which is what this one is. Yep. You could find a Hellraiser Extreme. You could find a lot of Extreme Hellraiser bases. This, this is the one that turned me on to Schecter's. Yeah. Yep. I, I played. Nice. I played that for about three hours up here one day. Yeah. Really liked it. It. I'd like it better if it was a solo six. You know, after I bought that Les Paul, I just bought that Gibson Les Paul. A, a friend was like, "Hey, I found one of these for sale. If you want it." I'm like, "Ah, oh, dude, like a black." <laughs> yeah, I think that yeah. was me. Yeah, and I had, a, I had a dude in England who was selling one. He's like, "I'm putting this up on eBay. If you're interested." I'm like, "Ah, oh, dude, it's always, always, it's always what happens." Les Paul. Like so, we I just bought a bunch of road cases, like cheap. Like I've been I've been looking for specific ones, like a specific type of case, mm -hmm. or a specific size, or like I really want to live in instead of like a trough lid, or you have to lift the amp out of, you know. So I knew what I was looking for. It took a while, and then the I even drove down to Houston to buy one because it was fifty bucks. But um, you know, the, the second I had everything done it was yeah. like the perfect case comes along and it would replace like two of the ones that i bought it's like oh. <sighs> hold on somebody's here somebody said hello Oop. hey man can i get some strings you need some strings I think we some. who knows that was going on the door no it was my dad okay he wanted me to help him with his trailer but the license plate on his farm trailer hmm. you might have it in texas <laughs> And people want to help you with their yep. farm tags. Yeah. Uh, what were you just saying? I'm just talking, talking about Schecter's, how like Schecter's. you look for like or, or Schecter's. You were talking about Schecter's. I was talking about road cases, but mm -hmm. this it's like the second you drop, the second you hit purchase, that like, that's when the next thing, the thing, thing that you, you really for, wanted, that's when it comes awesome. up. Yeah. It happens. What are you gonna do? Yeah. All right. Well, let's real quick because we're running out of time because we gotta go eat pizza. For a real. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about riffs for a minute because we've been. Uh, I've been on a kick with a lot of our students mm -hmm. trying to get them to start writing mm -hmm. um, because you know learning to play and learning to play a lot of other people's songs is great yeah. and that's yeah. why a lot of people pick up the guitars they want to mm -hmm. learn their favorite song but I think not enough people dip their toes into you you can do this yeah, yeah you yeah. can write music you can come up with your own stuff mm -hmm. I think I think a lot of particularly students are like I can't do that like, it, sure you can you can make something up right now yeah. it might be crap but you can make it up right yeah. now. And there's then, there's tons of people. There's tons of people out there that have their like. Uh, maybe chords, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're dropped down, so there's like. Drop. Just one, four, five. There's, there's yeah. a million songs out there like that. But if you had never done that, then you sit down and go one, four, five, then you've written a one, four, five song. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of them. Well, well, let's talk about writing riffs a little bit. Well, first of all, how about let's do this. What's your current favorite riff to play in the Warefoot set? In the Warefoot set? Which one do you play that you're always like, I love playing this one? Spellbinder, spell, the, 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 the beginning of Spellbinder and the, the hook like are, the, are, are definitely favorites. Song of Sirens is good, but I think that's in a different tuning, and also, like, we've no one's heard that yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, how's, how's yeah. the beginning so, of that one going? Spell water, and we just happen to be in drop tuning. Yeah, we are. So. And this is a fight I've had with every bass player, Brian and Wes. Um, mm -hmm. Not really a fight so much, it's just a discussion of, like, well, this is the same note as this. Why can't I play it here? It's like. The long story short, it sounds heavier here. The timbre it's, of the it's, note it's, is it's a, a little thick, different. It's a thicker string. It's going to sound. It sounds more like Matt Pike or Tony Iommi played it. If you played it the twelve. Yeah. What's the difference between a flute playing the same note and a clarinet playing the same note? Thank you. It's the same note. It's the same pitch. It's just a. The timbre is a little bit different. Yeah. It's, it's, ugh, a little more. Yeah. A little more girth. A little more girth. Yeah. So really, I'm a, I haven't sat down and trying to figure out what key, and that's the thing, you don't have to know music theory to write songs. Like, I'm still at my age learning music theory. Yeah. Um, but like, so like if we were in, in, we're in what, drop C sharp at this point? So like yeah. if, if we were gonna play, so like my head, I would normally, the way I used to be, it would frustrate another player I used to play with. Uh, shout out Mike Janicky. Um, 
I'd be like, oh, the first chord we play is a C sharp, so it's it's the songs in C sharp. He's like, no, you're you're an idiot. No, I'm like, oh, whatever. Well, it starts on a C sharp. Like whatever, here we go. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so it's here, but like the, the tonal home is here. It's gonna be a D sharp. With it, so it's like. It's fun. I mean, it's, it sounds Sabbathy. It's it's just you know it, I get to pretend I'm Matt Pike. And this so it's O2. Yeah, the hook the hook is just like open keep, second. Keep that part. Open second. Five open. I think you call me with those chunks. Yeah. Like at the very beginning intro, like one, two, like twenty. I do. I, I slide. That's really different than. Yeah. Yeah. This is more precise. That's more precise or whatever. And I'm I'm vibratoing half the song too, which uh -huh. isn't right and probably makes us sound out of tune sometimes live. But Tuning issues. <laughs> if we had like another guitar player, it could cause. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes we're close though. We're like, I mean, basically, it just makes it sludgier. Yeah, you, to me, it does. Like, it just, you, it just sounds greasy. Like. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember what guitar player said it, but economics of movement, or yeah, economics of movement, and like. Just like moving your hand as little as possible. So it's, if I don't. That seems like more work to me than. Yeah. Like I'm not even really moving my hand, I'm really moving my elbow. I'm just gonna rotate my arm down. Yeah. I feel like that's more work because if you have a finger that's close there, mm -hmm. it's less. It's, it's more. Oh, yeah, if you're doing that like that. But. I do like the little slide gives it more character. That's true. Yeah. So, so technically, even though maybe it's a little more movement involved, there's actually a little bit more character. You also have better technique than I do, though, because you you actually do four finger. Well, I do work on the pinky. Yeah, I don't. I don't not, this gets like I think this plays yeah. one note in like everything I play. Well, that's a great riff, and that brings up something I've been trying to teach my students just recently. Like this last two weeks, we've been talking about this a lot, and uh, it's like that's a killer riff. Not super complicated. Not, it's not like it's a lamb of God, like, oh gosh, oh, yeah, finger yeah. twisty, like, you know, no. crazy. But it's uh, it's very groovy and it's memorable. I was mm -hmm. thinking of you start playing, like, yeah, I heard this one before. Mm -hmm. Yep, I know, I know how I this know one what goes. This is. I know what it is. I know what song yeah. it is, yeah. So, coming up with that riff, what's, what comes after that? In the song, mm -hmm. we always just go back to. Back to the main riff. If you have 
have like a little bit of scale knowledge. Like not, I don't know what scale we're in right there, but if you just kind of can hear, if you, if you ever get a chance, even if you're not a music major, to take an oral skills class, just mm -hmm. take it just as fun because you start picking out intervals with like that. Go home and here's here's sort of a little template, and you go home and you come back and you yeah. And but they all came back with something pretty neat. <coughs> and one of them, like he didn't know, he was playing it. some kind of cool riff. Yeah. I was like, oh, you're actually in like a, a D Phrygian. Yeah. He didn't know. Right, right, right. But he was. I was like, these are your notes. <coughs> Based on those few notes, we can extract that you're really in this. And now that we know yeah. that, we can use those notes to kind of pick some other stuff. Mm -hmm. But your ear still tells you. And one girl came with this little melody thing. I was like, oh, you're 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 in G major right there. And she didn't know. Right. She was just picking notes. But our ears, our ears have been programmed since we were babies. For sure. That's, that's what. When I used to write songs in high school, it was like I I, I just. Is it all kind of people who don't people who play guitar but don't ever sit around with the guitar like when they're watching TV and stuff? I, mm -hmm. I don't understand those people. Mm -hmm. Because that's when you that's when you come up with ideas like this. You don't have to have your you can play electric guitar, not plugged into anything. But you just yeah. you just find stuff, and that's that. I always just play until I heard. I like like you were saying earlier. It's like I play this chord. I like the way that sound. I might, let's see what an F sounds like after a G. Blah, blah. Yeah. Let's. I had no idea like what was right theory wise, but yeah. it's just that's what I knew what sounded good to me. Because <laughs> you know what you don't like. Mm -hmm. You play something like okay, I like this note. I like this note. Those all sound okay together. And you can write. No. I got. I had a bad habit in high school too, or maybe college, but like of not playing the whole. Like when I play a G, I'm usually just playing G five. I'm just that's it. Like and I hold it. I'm mute that string. So every now and then I'll hit that, or I just play an A five. Yeah. Cool. So I mean, that's one thing I've been saying lately to all the kiddos is like, pick a note, pick another note, and then you go, do I like how those sound back to back yeah. or not? If the answer is yes, then you go to the next note. Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, then pick another one. And it's really just yep. yes or no questions. Do you like it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. No. We'll try the Yeah. And put different things in your ears too. Like, uh, if you like, if you if you want to write a certain thing. But you don't listen to a lot of the type of music. Like, put some of that in your ear. Or like, if you if you have a certain guitar player that you want to you want to try and write like they're writing, look, dig through some old interviews and find out what they used to listen to. Like, yeah. who, who are the players that they listened to when they were learning how to play? Go listen to some of those players. Yeah. You know, because you might glean something from those players that they didn't. Right. That would be more applicable to you. And that's how you start to develop your own style. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, we're, we've been big on that a lot around here lately because I'm like, man, I've been teaching these kids other people's stuff and teaching them how to play. I'm like, you know what? You're never too young to start creating. And even if it's not amazing, it's like, yeah. it's, your first song is probably not going to be Stairway or Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm. It doesn't have to be. It could be something very simple. And a lot of, and I'm going through and showing them, like, a lot of these big, huge hit songs that everybody likes mm -hmm. are not complicated. Right. Really, if you look at it and kind of study it, it's like, it's not really that complicated. But we all love it, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Simple simple is better. Simple and groovy is, that's what Werefit tries to stick to. But also, like, you got I think Bob Snyder is the guy that I'm, that I'm remembering, but he said, um, as a songwriter, you got to think of your, your, your songs as your children, mm -hmm. and not all your children are going to grow up to be president. Some of your children are going to be garbage right. men. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, uh, like, I think, you know, for Michael Jackson's Thriller record, they I think they recorded 50 songs. Oh, wow. For the record, and then chose the, what ended up on the record. So there's tons of stuff that, that gets written. You should just write every day, like, and not, or just make it an exercise, like when we did the riff-a-day kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Like, just, 
don't write with the intention of I'm writing a song. Just I'm just working on something. Like you're you're in the yeah. act of it every day. Yeah. Because some days you're gonna write something that should just go right in the trash can. Right. Like right in the garbage. If, if you didn't do that, that you would do that tomorrow if you didn't do it today. So you got the bad riff out early. That one's already out of the way. Yeah, the exactly. The next one might be the the one that you're like, oh, I really like this. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, we're running out of time. Yep. So we got a boogie, but. Thank you for the update. No problem. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any uh, questions, well, they should follow Warefoot. They should follow us on uh, uh, Facebook, I'll, Instagram. We're on Instagram too. I don't know. Instagram. We, I don't know how often that gets updated. David has David has control of that too, so uh. he posts more than I do. Because I'm lazy and don't switch over when I post to Instagram. I just put it on mine. Right. <laughs> yeah. But there's a Warefoot Facebook. There's a Facebook. Follow. There's a channel, isn't there? No. A YouTube channel? Well, I think one exists because we have a Gmail account for it, but I don't know how to set up. Like, uh, how do we pull all the videos off of my channel and put it on? Like, I don't know. We, you think if I. But I you could follow my, your, I need to ask you my a YouTube, YouTube channel. For, I do. Uh, I, I think it's just Adam Lamar. Um, we'll put links in the description. Uh, Instagram, I do and make stuff. I do and make stuff. Yeah. So we'll put Adam's stuff in the description and the Warefoot stuff in the description. Go check him out on the social medias. Stay tuned for updates. So, thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the mm -hmm. bell, subscribe, all that. A battery's about to die. Oh! Because uh, we just shot the Ask Her Name. It kills all the battery. But, yeah. anyways, we're going to go eat some pizza. You guys keep the music alive. Go home and write some riffs. Or if you're home right now, write a riff or a melody or whatever. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys. Later.